Welcome back to American Newscape. I'm Joyce Rockwood. And today I've got a very special guest who's on a mission to change the paradigm of pediatric medicine. If you're a parent, aunt, uncle, grandparent, health is definitely on your mind and for everyone around the globe. Do you want to feel like there's a chance for our children and grandchildren to grow up in a world that's thriving? There's a big question there. But what about the children themselves? Don't they deserve the same opportunity? We're all at an all-time high with the number of chronic disease that we see seeping in at a younger and younger age for our children, ranging from digestive to neurological, respiratory, immunological, and hormonal. And our children are suffering from these, as I said, at a younger and younger age than we've ever seen before. Many experts say that 90% of these diseases are reversible by natural medicine and proper nutrition. If the food we eat and the medical system that we rely on is failing us, then what, are, what do our children of today and tomorrow and the future have to look forward to? My guest today takes on a very big responsibility in this area. Dr. Joel Gator Warsh is a highly sought after award-winning integrative pediatric doctor in Los Angeles, who's also the medical advisor of Conscious Films and has appeared on and produced many revolutionary online programs you may have seen. In a nut, he is an advocate for changing the paradigm of pediatric medicine. Welcome, Dr. Joel Gator Warsh. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. You're working on some amazing things. We're going to dive in and I just would love for you to share with our audience what was the catalyst? What made you want to specialize in pediatrics? For me, it really was, I just always loved working with kids. When I went to med medical school, I knew I was going there to be a pediatrician. Um, I used to coach baseball and hockey. I grew up in, in Toronto and I just loved working with kids and I used to uh, run uh, camps and things like that. And I just always loved working with kids more than, than adults. So that, that to me was where, you know, I went to med school. I was like, okay, I'm going to be a pediatrician. I'm going to get to work with kids and, you know, kids, heal by nature they they listen by nature adults not so much when you give them medical advice and so just for me it was always what I, I wanted to do and, and what i felt was was more my my passion than working with adults yeah it kind of reminds me of why a lot of doctors go into veterinary yeah they'd rather work with, with dogs and cats and no, no humans <laughs> <laughs> Those that don't talk back. So you specialize in integrative pediatrics. Why don't you share what that means for those listening who are not familiar? Sure. Uh, so integrative really means something different to everybody. So there, there's not really, I think, one specific definition, but at least to me, what it means is combining the best of modern Western allopathic medicine with alternative holistic and natural medicine that we might be from around the world or things that we've learned in the past and combining those two together. So I'm not against Western medicine at all. I did all the regular Western medicine training and integrate pediatrics training. And I, I love and, and use that all the time. And there are certainly a time and a place where you need an x-ray, you need an antibiotic, there's lots of great things. But there are so many times where maybe a Western treatment isn't necessary, something might be more minor, or there might be something out there in the world that uh, has fewer side effects than the medications that we have, but does also work. And so just trying to learn about some of those things um, after my medical training and now bringing those together for the patients where we can do a little bit of both depending on what the, the situation is. So it's really the combination of uh, modern and alternative medicine uh, together as one, whatever's best on that day. Right. And so many parents now really love the idea of trying something natural for their children first to see if it does bring on and elicit the type of effect that they're looking for so that they don't have to deal with the unwanted effects of medication. So it's a beautiful thing that you support that. When did the branch of integrative get introduced in general? And how did you first find out about this? 
or when did you first? A lot of it was really my wife, honestly. It's always your wife, right? <laughs> so <laughs> yes. she's, she's, yeah, she, she's, she's very holistic minded. She grew up in a holistic minded house and, and she, she's a lawyer, but she's also a yoga instructor, or at least was for many years. Um, and, and she's just very holistic minded in that way. And she cooked very healthy and, and just that started being introduced to me. I always had stomach and, and gut issues and never really put together that those issues were because of what I was eating. And then as I changed my diet, I really started seeing most of those things go away, you know, the stomach aches and the bloating and those kind of things when I started eating a little bit more healthy. And that was the first catalyst to really making me think a little bit more about this. And then starting to see patients who had been in the regular Western medical system with their issues for five, 10, 20 years and not get better, but then go to a naturopathic doctor or a health coach or wherever and get better after a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And that really spurred me to say, Hey, you know, maybe there's a little bit more to learn, maybe there's something else out there because if all these people are getting better going to a naturopathic doctor, well, then there must be something that they know that we don't. What are they doing? Mm. Um, and, and how can I bring some of that into my practice? And so that's what got me started into learning. Because as soon as you go into the world of integrated medicine, there's not necessarily a specific one training. Like there is medical school, there's so many different fields. You could learn about essential oils, you could learn about um, Ayurvedic medicine, you can learn about Chinese medicine, you could become an acupuncturist, you, there's so many different things. So I think, at least for me, it was you know, learning a little bit about each one. And then I did more focus on, on functional medicine, which is looking at root cause medicine. But but most of it, honestly, is just talking to people like you and knowing about people like you, knowing about uh, the acupuncturist in your area, knowing about the massage therapist and not making fun of it, but learning about it and knowing when it might be useful for your patient while at the same time understanding the, the medical aspect of things because you also don't want to miss something serious and that's where you can also run into trouble with natural medicine when you try to do too much um, without knowing the medical aspects and missing something serious so that's where i think you need a little bit of both and that's where teamwork comes in because we should all be on the same team and work together right as opposed to you know the doctor knows everything or the naturopathic doctor knows everything everybody knows what they know and if we work together then we can hopefully get the child healthy Right, absolutely. And getting the feedback, of course, is probably mm -hmm. the most powerful information you can receive as a doctor. Mm -hmm. So you're a new dad. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how long have you been a new dad now? Uh, nine months-ish, a little more than nine months. <laughs> okay, awesome. So what's the major thing, like the one major thing you were talking about your wife, Sarah, who I also know, mm -hmm. What's the one major thing that you and Sarah are doing differently medically, would you say, to raise your son, Eli? Give him a little mm -hmm. airplay here. <laughs> that you would he's really like to bring to light. I'm sorry. What's that? <laughs> no, I was saying he's getting very famous. The little guy, his picture's getting everywhere. <laughs> yeah, not a bad thing. Uh, what's the one thing you want to bring to light for you know other parents looking for safe and optimum child rearing that you know you're doing differently, medically speaking? So I really what has if there's one big thing for me it's it's the diet so really what what he's eating um, and to me you know we've we've really put in an effort to make all food so far so we know exactly what what is in it we haven't purchased any of the the you know stuff that there are some good companies and some bad companies I'm not saying anything you know negative necessarily about the, those companies but we're just we've just especially with everything going on. We had the time and we're home more. Um, so just being able to prepare all food and, and thinking about what goes in it and making sure that things are organic and not GMO and, and all of those things, I think make a big difference. And, and at least thus far, you know, knock on wood, he's been very healthy. He hasn't had any medical issues. He has never needed to go to the doctor. Um, and, and I think that makes a huge difference just having a, a healthy diet versus something that's that's processed. And, and he, he was breastfed. So I think that also helps in terms of immunity. I mean, he had one or two times where he kind of seemed like he was getting sick and, you know, maybe had like either a little bit of like sweatiness, like a low grade fever, or he had, you know, like a little cough or something like that, but he got better within a day. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I mean, either way, it seems like his immune system is, is strong. Um, and, and I, I, I believe wholeheartedly that, you know, the nutrients in the food that we eat is a huge part of our, our health. And, and I, I think that for him certainly makes a big difference and it really makes a big difference for all of us, all kids, because you are what you eat, really. Like that's, you know, it's a phrase that people say, but you really are. And yeah, you can go take a multivitamin or something like that, but it's never as good as just eating healthy and getting the, the vitamins and nutrients from nature. 
We are on the same paradigm there, absolutely. And we both know that nutrition plays the most vital role out of anything when it comes to not only our kids' health, but to our health too. So you got me on board there. <laughs> and you're here today with me, but we would have loved to have had your partner, your business partner and dear friend, Rob Herring as well, who's another incredible activist, award-winning documentary filmmaker. You guys are working on something really incredible and groundbreaking right now. Why don't you tell everyone what that is? Sure. Well, thank, thanks for bringing that up. So we're doing the, uh, mm -hmm. the Integrated Pediatrics Summit. Basically, what we have put together is we got a whole bunch of wellness experts, doctors, celebrities, have all a lot of people have jumped on board, and, and it's five days, totally free, so August 12th to August 16th. Uh, and you can jump on and you watch whatever videos that you want. Each day it has a different focus. So we talk about the foundations or the seeds of health. So day one, S, uh, stress, and then you have environment and toxins, exercise, diet, and sleep. So these are the things I call the, the foundations or the seeds of health. And then there are several talks, I think like seven to 10 talks each day. Uh, we have about 50 speakers and, and you, know, you can go in, you can watch for five minutes, you could watch for 10 hours, whatever, whatever you wanna watch each day. Uh, and it's live for 24 hours, totally for free. Uh, and it's all about children's health, kids' health, wellness, talking about these different things, talking to different practitioners. We have amazing people like Joyce talking about essential oils. We have acupuncturists talking about acupressure and acupuncture for kids. Um, we had Hilary Duff who's speaking about uh, toxins and diapers. Um, she has a diaper company and people don't know that. Um, so she was talking about her journey with that. Um, all sorts of different people. So it's just a lot of people came together. It's been super exciting. It kind of snowballed to become a lot bigger than I ever imagined it would be, which is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> a lot of people, I guess, are in this, um, which is super cool. And, and so we're just trying to get this information out there because I've really learned over the last couple of years as I opened up my own practice that it's great that you can help you know, a few kids in your practice, but it's just not enough. And that's where mm -hmm. the combination with Rob has been super helpful because he's a documentary filmmaker and he knows how to mm -hmm. do all this media stuff that we don't get any training in, in, in medical school. So and so it's a big deal <laughs> you know how to set up like this, right? It's just not, it's just not something you ever learn about or think about and, and just trying to get that message to more people because most people don't have an integrative mind person maybe in their area or maybe can't afford um, to go to a specialist or anything like that, or maybe can't afford to go to acupuncture or, or other places. So at least if they get some information about it, then then you might have a better idea and you might it might spur you to start that conversation with your practitioner or it might spur you to say hey you know what i think going to a chiropractor would be great for this such and such thing or maybe you know today we have um or we have a uh, eliza donovan who worked with her child on pilates for her scoliosis and they avoided getting a brace because they went to Pilates mm. and work with this Pilates specialist to work on school. It's just things that I never knew about that. I didn't even know you could do that. So, you know, there's just all these things where it might be helpful to watch for certain people and you just pick and choose whatever you think is helpful. You know, I can't help but comment on how powerful something like that is for a child who doesn't have to go for years wearing a brace that's either uncomfortable or unsightly, being made fun of or being bullied, not having to go through invasive surgery and the recovery of that and the meds. I mean, it's just the ripple effect of what something natural can afford a child or children is so powerful. Yeah. I yeah. want to talk and, for a quick... Oh, sorry, I just want to jump on that because that's such a good point. And it's... Um... You know, and we're, again, we're not against Western medicine at all. You might need a brace, you might need surgery if those are the things to do. But if you can do Pilates and avoid surgery, why would you not do that, right? Why would you not do that? Why would you not try that first? If it's something serious, it's affecting your breathing, you know, you could die tomorrow. Okay, yeah, of course you need surgery. That's that's not what we're talking about. But if you can do Pilates and you can avoid getting that curve to the point where you need surgery, why wouldn't you do that? Everybody needs to know about things like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I actually have a dear friend who just went through very serious surgery and she's, you know, late thirties and it's been a tough recovery. Uh, you know, the pain meds that she had to take during uh, the recovery period were intense and, you know, it's done some damage to her bowels. So she's working on rehabilitating that with me, but it's true. We really, if we have the opportunity and there's a window for something preventative or to real, to create realignment, it would be wonderful that people have the information, the education to do that first. And what you're doing is so powerful, creating really more healers in every home and 
giving people more artillery so that they're not waiting till they're hungry to grow their garden, as I like to say, but they're able to really plant those seeds now and really live a, the most fruitful life, to say it in a punny way. <laughs> I want to talk for a quick second before we close out about your passion for doing this project and why it's so important for you to be doing something so revolutionary and really shifting the paradigm of pediatric care and medicine. Yeah, for me, there, there's two reasons. It really started out because of chronic disease. Um, chronic disease is just skyrocketing in adults. It's 50% or more uh, adults are on have a chronic disease most of them are on a med at least one medication uh kids those numbers are just continuing to go up i mean there's numbers like 25 percent, but i've seen other numbers up to 50 percent. so whatever the number is it's not good um and, yeah. and that's just a scary number and we have to do something about it we have to turn the tide we can't just keep ignoring it um and, and a big part of making those changes is the foundations and then also with everything going on now um there's nothing better to support your immune system than living a healthy lifestyle to whatever you can and, and you know, it's really tough right now for everybody uh, with everything going on. And, and there are, are you know, things that the government have mandated and all those things that are you know, very useful and those have been talked about a lot. But what hasn't really been talked about is, is what you can do at home yourself to keep your body as strong as possible. And those are the foundations of health. That's getting good sleep, trying to keep your stress down, having a good diet. All of those things make a huge difference because if you do come in contact with any virus, with any bacteria, with any parasite, with anything, no matter what, you're going to be more likely to not get sick or not get as sick if your body is strong. If you have six different comorbid conditions, you're, you're gonna have more, you're more likely to not do well with whatever comes your way, whether it's a breaking your leg or getting sick, um, you know, a, a, a common cold. A common cold can turn into something very serious in, in the wrong situation if you're unlucky. So if you have a strong immune system, then you're way more likely to handle that situation Better. And that doesn't mean just because you eat healthy, you're not going to get super sick. But all the research, for the most part that I've ever seen, shows that the people that eat healthier do better. The people that sleep more don't get as sick. There are many, many, many studies going way back that they, you know, they put viruses in people's noses and they they test them between sleep deprived, and not sleep deprived, and the sleep deprived people get sick three times more with the same study. So it's it's these are things that we've known for a long time. So you have to focus for your fa your family, yourself, your kids on some of these things because you do have some control over when they go to bed. You do have some control over what they watch on the news. You do have some control over what you eat at home um, to whatever degree that is. And so every little bit can help. And you make one small change, you eat one better food, you eat a little bit less preservatives or a little fewer chemicals or whatever it is, that could be the difference between you getting really sick and not sick. So it's worth to do whatever you can to keep your body healthy, at least in my opinion. A thousand percent, it's a huge payoff for investing in your health and the energy and the time it takes, you get so much more back than what you put in, is my saying. Mm -hmm. So you and Rob are such great partners. You're both so passionate about this mission. And I've heard you say it time and time again, we come together and we do this together. We do this together and there's such powerful energy in that. And that's why I think this platform with these guests that you've connected with, these experts, these beautiful minds, and really supporting people around the world with all of this incredible information. So anyone listening, if you are a mom, a dad, an aunt, uncle, a babysitter, no matter who you are, you can make a difference. We invite you to check out the Integrative Pediatrics Summit is there anything else that you wanted to share before we close out today, Dr. Warsh? I just want to say if, if people do want to check out the summit, then again, it's all free. Um, and you go to integrativepediatrics.com and you can sign up there. You just put in your name and email and then we send you the link so you can watch uh, the video. So again, integrativepediatrics.com. Join us, join the community, you know, join the future. This is the future of medicine for sure. Working together, like you say, um, because yeah. there's just so many issues, so much chronic disease that no one group of us can do it alone. We have to work together. <laughs> <laughs> the magical word. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I know that you've got to get back to the summit. You've got a lot going on with all of these amazing guests. So thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. This has been Joyce Rockwood with Dr. Joel Gator-Warsh talking about integrative pediatrics and how to take the best 
care of our children most mindfully. Additional links and information on Dr. Warsh and how to get in touch with him can be found in our read more section right below this video. And the exact link that you want to be able to opt in to get your free pass to the Integrative Pediatric Summit is also right below this video. So please find that there at your convenience and please consider subscribing to this channel and we will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.